Dave Palumbo here, and I know you guys know that we just had a clutch, our first clutch of ball python eggs. And you know, I want to educate you guys a little bit because not a lot of people know how, what goes into making a snake. So I want to show you the parents first, and then I'm going to show you the babies we produce, and I'm going to show you the different color, color morphs uh, and genes that were involved in making these snakes. Now, let's take a look at the, at the mother. She is what we call a hypomelanistic ball python, that she's big. She's very nice. Okay, if you look at her, okay, you wouldn't know if you didn't know anything about snakes, anything really that looks different about it. But I'm going to show you what a regular ball python looks like. This is Blecky, as you all know, named after Steve Blackman, even though it's a female. She's my original, so that's a normal ball python coloration. Now, if you look at this one next to it, this is hypomelanistic. It's almost like someone took turpentine and diluted this one to look like this one. And that's what this is, it's just a lack of pigment, okay? So this is what we call the hypomelanistic gene. Now we bred her with this male here, and I'm gonna show you the male. He's what's known as a coral glow or banana, same thing, spider, okay? It has this little spider web pattern, see that here? And this is a banana colored. When the bananas get a little older, they get a little more dilute color. And she carries the gene for hypomelanistic, or hypomelanism. So she doesn't display it visually, but she carries it. So when we breed him with her, there's a 50% chance that you're gonna get hypomelanistic snakes. Now there's also a 50% chance you're gonna get banana and spider in there. So the odds would say that you know, you're gonna get a couple normal looking ones, you're probably you know, gonna get a whole variety. We got lucky, we got all bananas, which means that this male has a very strong banana gene in it because we got the banana from him 100% of the time and it should have only been 50%. And we got one spider. So we kinda didn't, make, didn't meet the odds on the spiders because the spider should have been 50% too, but we got one spider, banana, and then we got all bananas. And I'm gonna show you those in a second right now, although she's trying to escape right now. Okay, let's close her up. I'm going to show you our little babies we got here. Let's see, they're under the, they haven't shed yet, they're going to shed very shortly. And if you look at this one here, this is a banana baby, and he's going to, he's got, as you see his eyes are gray, he's going to start shedding probably in the next day or two. And you can see the red coloration here, we think that this might be a hypomelanistic banana, which would be a very unique snake. There's no way to tell yet until it sheds a few times for certain, but right now it looks like that way. Now, if you see one of his litter mates, this is what we call a spider or banana spider. And this, this one has the spider pattern. You see the little spider webs like Spider-Man? You can see the difference. That's a regular banana, that's a spider. And he's got a lot of red in here too, so we, we think that he might be hypomelanistic. Now, there's only a 50% chance, but these two might be the ones that hit. So we don't know exactly what gene's in it, but you can see the difference now, okay? The parents pass down the genes, and there's a lot of luck involved, and if the dice are rolled correctly, and God smiles on you, you get the best of both worlds. This is my little genetics 101 lesson. Hope you enjoyed it.